Hi, this is Alex Fernandez with Bud and Doug Walters Auto Sales. Today I'll be doing a video going over the primary features inside of this 2017 Cadillac XT5 Luxury. We'll start by talking about the touchscreen here and the buttons just beneath it. We'll work our way down to the climate control and then to the center console with the shifter and some of the mode buttons here. And then we'll work our way over to the steering wheel, the buttons on it, and the stocks behind the wheel, as well as that screen and the gauge cluster there. And we'll move over to the left with the switches we have here. And finally, we'll talk about those buttons just up above in the center console there. Coming back to the touch screen, right now we're looking at what's called the home page. You'll see we have a little house icon. Pressing that would take us back to this screen from any other function uh, that we were using on the screen here. You'll notice we have audio, phone, projection, nav, settings, climate, weather, and SMS text. We'll start by going into the audio category here. Once we open that audio tab that plays or displays whatever it is that we're listening to for audio, you'll see here we're listening to FM 103.3. We're able to switch between AM, FM, and satellite radio by pressing this radio button here on the screen. And you'll see that cycles through those three different types of radio. We also have a media button here. That allows us to play things like uh, Bluetooth audio if we have a device connected to the system, as well as um, USB or auxiliary audio if that were plugged in and available. To change your stations, push the tune dials here on the screen, or we can also open this keypad here and punch in the station number directly. We have a browse button here, which opens up a menu here for us that allows us to display uh, most of the stations in your area. You can choose them right from the list. And the last thing we have there is a menu. And that gives us things like some sound settings, uh, categories for our FM stations, high definition radio, um, radio information, as well as uh, Bose Audio Pilot. Going back here along the bottom of the screen, they're hard to see right now, but there are presets. To set a preset, simply push and hold and wait for the beep and you'll see that that fills that up. As you, if you swipe right to left, there are more slots available if you needed more than just the first five that were displayed. To change the volume, we have a touch sensitive button here. We can actually slide across that or just tap on each end to increase or decrease volume. We also have a mute button as well. Going back to our home page, that phone section there, we're able to hook up a Bluetooth device, uh, a phone, whether smartphone or otherwise, and you're able to then make and receive phone calls here in the car, hands-free, and that will also sync up your contacts and your call history so that you have uh, the numbers you have saved in your phone available to you here in the car as well. Right now there are no devices paired. Uh, to begin that process is very simple, very straightforward. Simply press the pair device button there and you'll see then you need to begin searching in your Bluetooth settings on your phone for the Cadillac Q system. Once you've found that, simply select it on your phone and the system will walk you through the prompts to confirm pairing. And again, that will sync up your contacts and your call histories uh, so everything there is present in the vehicle with you as well. Going back to the home page, we have this projection icon. The projection icon enables the use of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, those programs run on the respective smartphones, Android or an iPhone. Those allow you to plug your device into the USB port of the vehicle and then access things like your favorite navigation apps, whether that's Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. You would also have access to all your phone calls and text messages, as well as music or podcasts or any audio that you've listened to on your phone. The next icon we have is navigation. When we press that, we'll see a map view with a little menu here on the bottom. We'll push destination here to actually be able to plug in uh, where we'd like to go. You'll see we can search by address, intersection, points of interest, recent destinations, or if you save contacts um, with addresses, you can, you can have those there as well. We also have a search bar just up at the top that allows us to type in an address or a place as well that would then search for that destination for you. If we go by address, 
we get a template here with the state, the city, the street, and the house number. And you just fill that in section by section. And then you'd receive turn by turn prompts um, through the speakers of the vehicle as well as on the display there if you have that navigation section open. Next we have settings. Allows us to change things like time and date, some radio settings, some vehicle settings, uh, things like that. Back to the home page, we have the climate section. While we're talking about this climate section, I'll also talk about the buttons that we have down below that control that as well. As you see here, we have dual zone climate control with driver's side and passenger side controls, along with fan speed right in the middle. You can adjust that up or down as necessary. We have our air conditioning, whether that's on or off. And then along the bottom, we have the different locations of where that air is being sent to, uh, which, which vents it's being put through. Down below, we have similar controls. We have driver side temperature, passenger side temperature, and fan speed in the middle. It's just a up-down toggle switch. We have here auto mode, our recirculate mode, off button for the whole climate control system. Simply push that fan speed button or push the off button again to turn it back on. We have the front defroster and the rear defroster here, and then we have our heated seats for driver and passenger as well. If we change the passenger temperature, they can be separate from each other, different from each other, and you'll notice that on the screen we have the sync option that appears. Once we've changed that or selected that, then the two zones become one, and changing that driver's side temperature changes both zones together. Going back to the home page, we have weather, which does require a SiriusXM Travel Link subscription. If you subscribe to that, you'll have that function available to you. We also have the texting section there. If your paired Bluetooth device is compatible with this function, the vehicle will be able to display your text messages to you and read them out to you um, when you receive them in the vehicle. Looking down below here, we have the shifter. It's an electronic shifter. To use it, simply squeeze this button here on the side to put it in drive, pull straight back. To put it in neutral, push straight forward and hold. And to put it in reverse, push straight forward and move to the left. To put the vehicle in park, you simply push that P button. And then the last thing, the last mode we have there is the manual mode. You'll see we can just pull back to cycle between drive and manual. And then there are um, paddles on the back side of the wheel on the right and the left uh, for upshifting. You'll see it says M1. If I pull a paddle, it's M2 to upshift. Left side paddle, pull that, and that's the downshift. Looking back at the center console here, we have turning off the traction control, which is on by default every time you start the vehicle. We have our drive mode button. When we press that, you'll see a screen display up here in the gauge cluster. We have our three modes. We have tour, we have our all-wheel drive mode, and we have our sport mode. Tour is gonna to prioritize comfort. Sport is gonna prioritize uh, some more power, some more acceleration, and obviously the all-wheel drive mode will uh, activate the all-wheel drive system of the vehicle if you need it. Looking at the steering wheel now, we have controls here, up, down, left, right, and select buttons along with volume controls for our audio. Let's see if we can increase and decrease the volume there. Using these, we can control the screen at the base of the cluster there. And there's three sections. There's a left side, there's the middle, and there's the right side. We cycle between those by pushing the left or right buttons. When within each one of those sections, we can push the up and down buttons to cycle through the different information that can be displayed there. You'll see in the center we have digital speed along with the speed limit if that information is available. We have compass display. This is our, our navigation section. You can resume a route from there if you'd like to by simply pushing the select button and opening the menu. Uh, within the next section is our audio. Again, we have a menu. We can open and change the source of audio or cycle through our favorites or presets. We have the phone section. Again, no phones connected, so we don't have access to anything right now. The fuel efficiency gauge just show you, shows you how efficient you're being with your braking and your acceleration. 
And then we have a fuel economy section there showing average fuel economy, best fuel economy, instant fuel economy. And then our options page, if there's any menu settings we need to change. If we push to the right, we open that right portion. Right now we have fuel range there displayed. We can also use or display average fuel economy. To reset that, simply push and hold the select button down to reset it. We have that efficiency gauge, the compass display, speed limit, our cruise settings, our following distance with the vehicle in front of us in seconds, our battery voltage, oil life as a percentage, tire pressures, and then just a blank page to tell you you're back at the beginning. We also have trip odometer inside of there. Again, hold select to reset, along with vehicle odometer and vehicle speed. Moving to the left side, we have vehicle odometer displayed there. And that's actually the same set of information as what's on that right side portion. And so again, you can choose what you'd like to have displayed there. This, these two buttons here, these allow us to cycle between the presets that you have set on the radio or would skip a track if you're listening to Bluetooth or anything like that. On the left side of our wheel, we have our cruise control settings here. We have our on off switch. We press that on off switch. We have a little icon that appears in the speedometer there. Once you're up to speed, push set to set the speed. To accelerate, push the plus sign. To decelerate, push the minus sign. And then tap cancel or hit the brakes. And then you could resume that previous speed. To the left side here, we have the button to hang up or decline an incoming phone call, as well as the voice command button to tell the vehicle to place a call to one of your contacts or dialing a specific number. Down below, we have the forward collision alert button. That's the top one here. You'll see when we press that, we can adjust the interval at which that collision alert system will uh, intervene. So if we're coming up on slower or stopped traffic and weren't slowing down, whether you're distracted or whatever the case might be, if, with this collision alert turned on, the vehicle would uh, grab your attention by um, flashing some lights up on the dash and beeping a loud sound so that you can uh, direct your attention back to the road. You can adjust the interval at which that system would intervene one bar being the closest, three bars being the furthest. Right beneath that, we have our lane departure warning. We can turn that on and off as well. And with clearly marked road lines, if you were to drift out of your lane, the vehicle can alert you uh, to that drifting that you're doing and try to, again, get your attention back to the road. And the last button we have there is our heated steering wheel here for the wheel. Looking at the stalks behind the wheel, we have our windshield wipers on the right side. To use those, simply rotate or push the stock up to go through the different speeds. And we do have rain sensing wipers, so if you put it to this first position, we're in auto, which will speed up and slow down given how much rainfall there is, but you can also adjust it yourself using this portion here. We have low speed, and then we have high speed as the last position. To do a single swipe, simply just push that stock down one time. For the rear wiper, rotate the end of the stock here. We have the off position, the intermittent position, and the on position. And then to do the spray for this vehicle, pull the stock towards you for the front spray and push the stock away for the rear spray there. Looking on the left side, we have our headlight controls here. Headlights are automatic. They're set there right now. We also have uh, high beams, push away to turn on, pull towards to flash along with our blinkers. And then there's a button right on the end of the stock for the automatic high beams. With that turned on, if you're using your high beams, the vehicle would turn those high beams off if another car is approaching you. And then once that vehicle is gone, the car would turn the high beams back on for you. Looking at the left side here, we have our parking brake. Push to engage, and then put your foot on the brake pedal and push again to disengage. This scroll wheel here allows us to adjust the brightness of the backlighting of our gauges and interior lights when the headlights have come on. And then looking at the door, we have our door locks here. We have our driver's seat presets. We have two slots, push and hold set, and at the same time, push and hold the number you'd like to use once your seating position is set. And then the last button there is the easy entry exit button. When you shut the vehicle off, the car will move that seat back out of your way so it's easier to get in and out of. Looking at the door, we have our window switches here. We have our window locks, our power folding mirrors here, and then our mirror adjustments. 
choosing which side we're adjusting and the control pad there to move it as necessary. And tucked away here is the powered liftgate function. Push right in the middle of that button to open and close it. And we can also adjust its height from max height to three quarter height, or we can turn that off altogether and make that just a manual liftgate. Looking up above here, we have controls for our dome lights. Press those to turn them on. We have the switch that tells the doors opening to turn the dome lights on. And then we have a button to turn the dome lights on in the whole car all together. We have our OnStar related buttons here. So the, the call button, the OnStar button, and an SOS. OnStar is a subscription based service offered by GM that offers things like turn by turn directions, stolen vehicle recovery, and roadside assistance. We also have controls for our sunroof. This piece here to open or close the glass, and the one on the right side to open and close the shade. Right behind that, we have three programmable garage door buttons, so you can program your remote and no longer have to keep it in the car. And the last thing there, we have a glasses case up at the top. Those are the primary features of this 2017 Cadillac XT5 Luxury. If you have any further questions, please refer to us at waltersautos.com or feel free to call 269-375-7008 with any further questions or to set up an appointment. Thank you.